all these mics? Shit. Damn, Am I not allowed to cuss on this thing? It's, enc it's encouraged. <laughs> we actually hope you do. <laughs> hope you don't, or hope you do. Dude, hope you do. We won't beat that at all. They got pissed off at me, huh? They said, fuck on me. Oh, man, I'm sorry, Sean. I swear I didn't think about doing it. Okay. I have a hat for you. I think we should help, but I have a hat for you. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So, so cool. did we hear you correctly? Was it whoops, there it is? Or yeah, whoop, whoop, there, there it is. is. <laughs> yeah. Is that the mantra for the event? Like you're like, there it is, there's my there's my debut, there's my open. I mean it is what it is, you know. I think that's what you guys wanted to see, right? Whoop, there it is. What was the feeling like finally walking out there to the cage and taking in the lights and seeing all the people and having your corners behind you? What was that moment like for you? It felt pretty good. I've kind of missed it a little bit since my last fight. Um, that it's a little bit of a different feeling when you step on on the stage and everybody's watching and the lights a little different and everything. It's a little bit different of a feeling, but actually when I got there, it felt really good. It felt really at home and like I missed it and the adrenaline feels good and everything feels good. So, thank God everything goes well. Were there any nerves? Were you, like, at some point, we're like, oh, I'm about to get in a fight? No, I think that, no. That's why my name is Ice Cream Crown. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I mean, there's always like feelings you get, you know, one month out from the fight, two weeks out from the fight, one week out from the fight, one day before the fight, two hours. I mean, there's feelings you get, but I've always been able to just kind of focus on what's necessary and stay cool under pressure. And, that's been natural since I was a little kid. And uh, I do a lot of training, I spar a lot. I train with a lot of good guys, a lot of pro boxers, a lot of, you know, a lot of Nate Diaz punching me in the face, a lot of people been putting me through a lot of training for a long time. So it's not, um, nothing new, you know, nothing like, nothing was a surprise. And I've been, I'm, I've been training for this for a while, you know, almost my whole life. And, and media day, you, you talked a lot about how you just wanted to test yourself against mm -hmm. the best, and that was in the UFC. Yeah. Speaking on Casera specifically, do you think he was a good test for you in there now that it's over? Yeah, I think, of course. I said that I didn't want to disrespect him and say that he wasn't tough and I wanted a tougher guy. I was saying that I had fought Kawajiri in my fight before. Mm -hmm. That was a guy who was a top 10 guy for years. And his record was like 35 and 10. And his last fight was before me was with Cub Swanson. So that's what I was saying. I was like, I wanted a guy that kind of sure. better than Kawajiri so I could improve my, my uh, credibility. Nothing to take away from Alex and anything that happened in the fight, you could lose to somebody with less credibility, you could lose to anybody. It's still a gamble. You never know what can happen. Um, but I really, I think Alex was a good test and uh, I'm glad to have come out, you know, the first round, so. How much pressure having the, the weight of the family name, the heritage, <laughs> going into this? Uh, pressure is there, but I, like I said, that's why I, that's why I try to stay cool under pressure. You know? It's like uh, I've always had pressure. I'm like a nine year old kid going into a jiu-jitsu match. Everyone's like, oh, that's Hickson. All of a sudden, a tournament with 500 people. All the 500 people are looking at me as a little kid. So I felt that from a little kid. My dad never lost a fight. It's always been a bit of pressure, you know? And the pressure that you guys put on me is not nearly as much as the pressure that my dad puts on me, so. <laughs> Have you talked to your dad since the not win? Not today, but I talked to him yesterday. Your family obviously has deep roots in Brazil. They have a pretty big stadium show coming up in May. Is that something you like, like competing in what front of? What is it right now, February 17th? Yes. And then March, April, May, yeah, for sure. May? Yeah. I'll be ready to go, no problem. In Curitiba? Whatever. Did you see uh, Conor McGregor's comments about you this week and even tonight? I didn't see what he said tonight. What he said tonight? He said, uh, I think he said, welcome to the game, young son. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I heard what he said yesterday and it's kind of cool to get that uh, respect, that he respects the Gracie family because it's true. None of us would be here without my, without my uncle creating the UFC. So. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of surreal sometimes, you know, that I'm in the, that I'm in the situation that I that I'm in. 
uh, you know, my grandfather, my dad never lost, and me, it's kind of like a pretty interesting storyline, and uh, I'm here to make some noise, you know, I'm here to make some problems for everybody. You've been asked about the Gracie name probably more times than I can count, but do you acknowledge that it probably gives you a bit of a silver lining that you're going to, this sport's about getting attention and building your name, you've already got it, right? Is there a silver lining to that? Say it again. Is there like a positive to having a great name? Like it's going to get you more attention, get you those shots quicker than you would ever think just like Craig Smith. It's like a gift and a curse, you know? Like anything, there's a good and a bad. And it doesn't come without something else. Like the good things about being in the Grace family, about being Hickson's son, about training with my dad, is there's a lot of positive, and then there's a lot of negative too, you know? There's a lot of downside, and there's a lot of, you know, like everything, there's ups and downs. You gotta get through, you gotta get through it. No one gets out of this life having an easy life. Even people who are rich, super rich, they don't have an easy life. They have to deal with other problems. So the fact that you're Gracie, look at how many other Gracies have, have not been in my situation to win a fight, you know? So it's like, it's not easy. Just being a Gracie doesn't make it easy. Uh, just being anything doesn't make it easy. So you don't get out of this life easy. Life. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, um, I think that the Gracie family is something that I've been wanting to represent since I was a little kid, and now it's like ingrained in me, I don't even think about it. But if I am gonna, if it is gonna help me, since it's such a part of me, since I was a little kid, and everything I am is because of the family, and it's because of my roots, and because of my dad, then all that pressure that I had to deal with my whole life it's gonna add up to the good now. Now I get to take that and I get to represent the family. And now every move I make is twice as powerful because I've been carrying this weight on my shoulders since I was a little kid. Can you talk about, who, who did you actually train with for this fight? I know Nate was in your corner, but yeah. was, was he part of your actual camp day to day? Uh, definitely not day to day because he lives up north. He lives in, in Stockton. And he comes out, he came out a few times for the camp. And I had a lot of pro boxers come in and train with me. I had some, some pro MMA guys. Um, but mostly a lot of my training was done at the gym with my students. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people at my gym and I do a lot of like uh, running and whatever, workouts and stuff, and a lot of spiritual work. So I just kind of do a lot of stuff. And I'm work, I just built a gym next to mine which has boxing rings and punching bags like throughout this camp. So now I'll be able to put in better training for me. So throughout this whole camp I was training, I was also building a gym next door. And now that this fight is over, I'll be able to open that gym up and have the good training. So I'll be able to make it a lot easier for pro boxers and pro uh, kickboxers, whoever wants to train, trainers, all this stuff to come down. And you're still, like day to day, you're still just a, you're an, you're an instructor, right? You teach classes? Yeah, yeah, I teach a lot of classes. Yeah, I teach a lot. I have, I have a my gym has been a my biggest support system since I was a little kid, and uh, they're always there trying to beat me up, trying to you know get information. They're like my constant motivation, and they don't let me sleep. So I think my gym is really what keeps me alive on a day-to-day -day basis. And then of course, if I'm training for a fight, I'm not teaching as much, and they all understand it. And everybody's super happy. Do you miss just? You miss teaching, or I teach. You you know, still, yeah. yeah, I still teach. Like I, I, after this fight, I'll teach for a little bit, and then as soon as I get to a camp, I, I I won't teach. But I think there's a big part of teaching and service that helps me become a better fighter. If I don't teach for too long, my fighting gets a little rusty. So it's a weird balance, a karmic balance for me. Like the more I teach, there's a balance between teaching and training that I have to keep to make sure I'm at my optimal health. So it's like, even when I teach the little kids sometimes, even though I'm that, it doesn't feel like I'm getting better, it makes me better. Because of, like, with the universe, the more you help, the more you're at service, the more it makes you better. So I go and I teach these little kids, and it makes me happy, and I get better somehow. And all of a sudden, I'm sparring with pro boxers, and I'm getting better against them. And somehow, it's all connected. I think with the Gracie name, you could probably call your shots a lot easier than somebody else coming in to the UFC. I think you, you took the UFC's name they gave you now and you put them away pretty easy. Are you going to take a more active role and maybe call in a particular person out? And are there names of somebody that you think 
you want next, or maybe that you've looked at the UFC and said, I want to fight this guy or this guy? Well, I, there, since I was in this camp, I was just focused on this guy, and a lot has changed throughout this camp. So I'm going to look at what are the stats, what, who's, who's what, who's really doing something, and uh, I'll come up with somebody. Post fight, you made a comment about watch your neck. Uh, yeah, for sure. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? The neck is between the head and the shoulders, <laughs> and it's what I'm going to choke when I get your back or in front of you or on the side of you. That's what's going to happen. Did you did you visualize this this fight ending with the with the rear neck and choke? Um, I visualize a lot of things, you know, good and bad in the fight. I visualize having a long fight. I visualize having a good fight. Submissions from all different angles. I visualize a lot of different possibilities. This is just the one that happened. Before I knew it, I was on his back. I don't even know how I got it. I just happened. So. Your opponent tonight had that. This was a 20th trip that he occupied. You know, all season veteran. You came right into the deep end. Fought a guy that's well traveled. Fought your eye in favor. Fought Sergio Pettis. Fought everybody. I think, you know, gentlemen elaborated on it. What's next for you? But where do you see yourself going here? Where do you see the next step? Only up, right? I don't see myself going back down. My fight before that was with Kawajiri. Kawajiri was the top there top contender for a long, long time. And that was a tough fight, and I did well against him, so I felt like I wanted another test, I wanted another challenge, and I want every fight to get tougher and tougher. I, you don't know how long we live for, so you gotta take these moments as you can, and have a tough fight. Like I said before, I want tough fights, tough guys. Win or lose, I wanna come back and get better. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't even curse. Yeah. <laughs> give one, give one last one. Yeah, yeah. one last one. No, 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 no. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs>